Good morning. I'm John Kriswicki. I'm a partner at Analysis Mason, a consulting firm with offices in 12 offices around the world, including here in the U.S. as well as primarily in Europe. I'm speaking with Jared Appleby, the COO of Coresight. Um, Jared, good to have you here. And why don't you give us a little history and a little background on where you've seen the data center market evolving over time and how it interrelates with the large carrier concerns? Well, it's good to see you, John. Yeah, this is probably my 10th year here. It's great to see the evolution of the conference as it's moved from, you know, voice and the networking community, but really adopted now the cloud community. So we're really seeing that in the business as well, and core sites in the center of all that with our data centers that, that are out there uh, distributed in across North America. We're in 10 markets today, and, you know, you really see the relevance here with this global community and the role of the network and, and data center world. Good. Can you tell us about your mesh product? That's one of your exciting new things that you're doing. Yeah, the, the company's been around 13 years, grew up as a real estate company with the Carlisle Group. About two years ago, we went IPO and really put the at the center of it network-centric computing, uh, the cloud and network community coming together. Uh, on Friday, we actually launched our new brand uh, all around the community, the, the power of the mesh, as we call it, for, for CoreSight which is really uh, you know, putting data center networking at the center of architecture and, uh, and enabling you to really leverage uh, data center networking into the cloud community. So that's the foundation of the mesh, and it's really uh, our latest announcement uh, from last week. Where are you seeing the large carrier go carriers going with their data center needs as the internet continues to explode, as there's more and more video content and therefore a tremendous amount more bits cruising the undersea cables in the world? Well, we're really seeing an evolution. I think there's some companies that were really built um, to scale the internet. Uh, video and, and particularly cloud computing is changing that. And that's one of the things we're excited at CoreSight is building out these cloud-enabled data center campuses to support the, the requirements of, of all the large bandwidth requirements and application performance, sensitive performance kinds of applications that need to be near the edge. So folks are really moving to what we call distributed architectures at the edge and close to end users and to the community who are buyers to get better performance out of, out of their applications and out of their networking needs. Certainly one of the areas that's exploding is Latin America and there's a new cable, the CBRAS cable by the Seaborn yeah. folks. I just saw a press release from you, I guess, in the past week, saying that you are going to be doing a variety of things with them. Would you like to explain that and maybe suggest how that moves your business model along? Yeah, we're, we talk a lot about these campuses that are, and, and it really started a few years ago when Unity came over and landed in LA, and they directly connected into the One Wilshire and you know, LA campus. Mm -hmm. And that really was a new way of, of providing cloud and digital content. Uh, that's what we announced on Friday with Seaborn. You know, with Seabross coming up, where are they going to land? Well, we're bringing them right from their landing site into our new Secaucus facility, which is a 10-acre, 280,000 square foot center that will be up, you know, in the th end of third quarter, early fourth quarter. And they're, they're landing there and then distributing from there back into New York and other places in New Jersey. So you get the high performance right to Brazil, and you're seeing this for the to support the cloud networking and, and digital content world today. As the world's evolving, there's certain providers like Google, like Amazon, that control a tremendous amount of bits. But then there are a great many people, such as enterprises or carriers themselves, which have data center needs that are evolving. We're certainly seeing the Googles of the world building significant amounts of data center capacity abroad. Um, to reduce their costs, to engage in caching, to bring content closer to the locals, for instance in Brazil, for instance in Europe. Um, where do you see your fitting in versus the very large, the Googles of the world, versus the smaller, the, the more enterprise-oriented uh, people who need data centers, and, and in particular as their international needs develop, where, where, where's your thinking going? Well, it starts with, with the big provi uh, service providers and, and content folks that you're talking about. They have different needs. For big power uses, they'll go to Eastern Washington or North Carolina, you know, where they can get cheap power and very large mm -hmm. footprint. But where you need to have high performance centers, I'll use AWS as an example, in two of our sites, you can directly connect to them in New York or in LA. And what that does is it improves the performance and gives you a very secure connectivity needs right into their cloud. And so we're seeing those as kind of foundational. 
what happens is smaller users want to be next to that. They get better performance if they're nearby. So we see ourselves focus on application sensitive uh, needs, those performance needs, and they need to be closer to end users and, and closer to these campuses. And you have a mix of uh, applications, whether it's from big providers like AWS or smaller providers who want to connect to them. Good, maybe one last question. What do you think is going to be one of the two or three most important trends as we look forward to the next three or five years? Well, I think basically when we talk to folks, we see, I think, a couple things. One is data center networking, putting data centers at the core, give the flexibility and the agility to pr choose providers and have the most options and, and manage your TCO. Uh, second, you want to be near the cloud. You want to put the cloud at the center of your architecture. And the third question is, do you have the expertise and there's a whole community and ecosystem of providers who can, you can leverage, who can manage it for you, manage you through this architectural shift. So very exciting time for the community, cloud and networking, and, and you see a lot of that here at, uh, at PTC. Good, thank you very much. Thanks. Sean. Thank you, take Appreciate care. It.